Hello readers. I hope you enjoy today's story because we are traveling back to the land of Hong Kong. And we are also going to hear another story that involves a dragon. Now, dragons are very important in some cultures, particularly in Hong Kong and China. And they believe that in every green valley or green open space, there is a dragon which is protecting the mountains, the valley and the path to the sea. The family live in Hong Kong in this story and they are going hiking in a green area and they encounter something and then they encounter a dragon. Now the story is about being very careful to look after our environment and making sure we do the right thing by the land. I really hope you enjoy today's story. I hope that you Think a lot about the environment and your area around you when we're reading it. The Dragon's Back is written by Thea Whittington and the author has dedicated the book to two people. We don't know who they are but we know that their names are Robin and Francis because she's written for Robin and Francis on the left hand side. might notice something special on some of the pictures as we read this book. My copy of The Dragon's Back has these dots added to it and what they are is braille. Braille is a way for people who cannot see the print well enough or at all to still be able to read. So they run their finger along the patterns of dots and it reads words and letters and sentences just like print does. So if you notice some dots in this copy of The Dragon's Back, that it is just the braille for the vision impaired or blind children to read the story as well. Su Ming, his sister, his mum and dad and their little dog lived in a large city with tall buildings. It was a busy place, but there were mountains and forests nearby. So one day they decided to go for a special walk in the countryside. Just before they started to walk, Xu Ming's dad got out a big map. You can see they're actually sitting on the map in this picture. You see that long red line? That shows the path we will follow, he explained. The land looks a Funny shape, thought Su Ming, but he said nothing. They set off. It felt so lovely to walk through a big green space after staying so long in the city. Suming looked around him and at large and rather jagged hills. It didn't take long for him to realise that quite clearly they were all on the back of an amazing and gigantic... What do you think they're on the back of? You might notice that we've got four full stops in a row here. The author has done that on purpose. It didn't take long for him to realise that quite clearly they were all on the back of an amazing and gigantic... Now that's the end of the page and we've got those dots because the author wants you to take a pause because he's building up the suspense. What are they going to be on the back of? And you can see here, these are the rest of the dots that give us our answer. Dragon. So the author is using this punctuation to tell us to slow down and get ready for something really amazing. Dragon! Wow! exclaimed Su Ming. Then he wondered, but Dad, is it a good dragon? 
His dad replied, dragons are kind and bring good fortune. That's kind of like good luck. People used to worship them because they brought rain and helped the crops grow. People also thought that the green dragons guarded part of the universe. Dragons are very important. And so Su Ming understood that this dragon protected the people who walked on its back and enjoyed the sea and the sand by his side. Now here we can see those dots again. People also thought that the green dragons guarded part of the universe. There's those dots, so something important is coming. Take a bit of a breath. And this is a complete sentence all of its own. Dragons are very important. The author has used these dots to get you to stop and think because what he is about to say is very important. And what is the important thing in this story is that the author wants you to know that dragons are very important to this family and to this place. So the author has used punctuation to help us to understand the story and to communicate to us. Su Ming and his family walked on and on for over two hours. Time to stop for a snack, said Su Ming's mum. It's hot and it's been a hard climb, but the view is wonderful. The air was getting quite heavy. Su Ming said, I can hear a little thunder. There was a faraway rumbling, just like a deep rolling sound. The dragon is snoring, thought Su Ming. Suddenly, he jumped up and called, I can see. What do you think he can see? Smoke, flames, and fire. We must get away, the family all agreed. But we must rescue the poor dragon, called Su Ming. Hurry up, begged his mother. But Su Ming kept looking back at where the dragon was burning. Then Su Ming said loudly, I can see a strange object in the sea. What do you think that object was? And I can hear. What do you think he can hear? A helicopter. It was hovering over the sea and out from the bottom of a helicopter came a huge bucket. It scooped up seawater and afterwards flew off towards the burning dragon. Firemen rushed up the hillside carrying powerful hoses. These firemen are really good doctors for the dragon, thought Su Ming. As he and his family watched water pouring from the bucket and spraying from the long hoses. But Su Ming knew that the dragon was in a lot of pain. The poor dragon sunk his burning nostrils into the sea and curled up his toes and dipped them into the water so that he would might feel a little better. Su Ming thought, the handsome green dragon is now spoiled and he is very sad because something terrible has happened to him. So he can no longer protect all the people who enjoy walking on his back. He could see that the dragon could hold back his tears no longer. And the dragon just 
cried and cried. The flames eventually died down until they were no more. Suming and his family were getting very wet. They had to leave. Poor dragon. Much later in the day, Su Ming and his dad came back to a small edge of the dragon. Su Ming asked, Dad, why was our dragon so terribly hurt? His dad sighed. When people stopped to light their delicious barbecues, they didn't care for him as they should have done. And they left their barbecues burning, cried Su Ming. Yes, his dad replied. Will our dragon ever be green again? Will the trees and flowers ever be as beautiful as they were before the dragon caught fire, Su Ming asked? Well, it will take a long time, but... And then his dad smiled. Yes, it will be lovely here again, as long as people will care for the land. You will always care for it, won't you? Su Ming nodded. He wanted to care for the dragon very much. He wanted the trees and the plants to grow again, for the dragon to be happy and full of life. And so he waited. The dragon did get better. Then Suming knew for sure that the dragon would always care for him, his family and anyone who came to walk or to play upon his back. Is there a mountain near your home? What is it called? What would you do if you were to see a fire upon the mountain? Who would you contact? This is a very important page in the story. It asks you, is there a mountain where you are? Or maybe a large park or a forest or any kind of outdoor space? And what would you do if you saw a fire there? In each part of the world, there is a different emergency number that you can call if you have any kind of problem. In Australia, we have a number, 000, and that can call the fire brigade, the police, and the ambulance. It's important to get an adult to help you to do this, but this is a very important thing because we need to take care of our land, and fires are often reported by the public and then the fire brigade can go and help to put out the fire. Thank you for paying attention and spend some time having a little bit of a think or a research about what number you and your family might call if you saw a fire in your area or an area where you were hiking like this family.